grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Welcome to Palm Sunday worship. Today marks the beginning of our Holy Week journey. With Jesus, we enter the holy city of Jerusalem, the city where he is crowned and where he is crucified. This is a week to listen and to pray. It's a week to let God speak to you about the suffering of the world. It's a week to let God speak to you about the resurrecting power of his love. Much has changed for us this year, but the story of our salvation, this story remains the same. Our king comes to us. He is humble and riding on a donkey. It is Palm Sunday. Let us worship. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Everlasting God, in your endless love for the human race, you sent our Lord Jesus Christ to take on our nature and to suffer death on the cross. In your mercy, enable us to share in his obedience to your will and in the glorious victory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Psalm 31. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with sorrow, and also my throat and my belly. For my life is wasted with grief, and my years with sighing. My strength fails me because of affliction, and my bones are consumed. I am the scorn of all my enemies, a disgrace to my neighbors, a dismay to my acquaintances. When they see me in the street, they avoid me. Like the dead, I am forgotten, out of mind. I am as useless as a broken pot. For I have heard the whispering of the crowd. Fear is all around. They put their heads together against me. They plot to take my life. But as for me, I have trusted in you, O Lord. I have said, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from those who persecute me. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, 
Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied, and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, The Lord needs them. And he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you, humble, and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus has directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest heaven! When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, Who is this? The crowds were saying, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you from the God who comes to you humbly, riding on a donkey. When Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem, Jesus came riding a donkey. Back when I was in high school, I read the novel, Their Eyes Were Watching God, by Zora Neale Hurston. And I remember this passage from the book that always flashes in my mind when I think about the donkey that Jesus rode upon. Nanny Crawford is a black woman who has seen a lifetime of suffering. And in a moment of clarity, she tells her granddaughter, she tells her the truth about the world that they live in. She explains, the white man throws down his load and he tells the black man to pick it up. And he picks it up because he has to, but he refuses to carry it. He hands it to his woman and the black woman. She is the mule of the world as far as I can see. I don't know why that line in Hurston's book stuck so vividly in my mind, but it did. And it reminds me that how you think of something as simple as Jesus riding into Jerusalem on a donkey depends on where you stand. It depends on the load that you carry. The gospel reading itself says that when Jesus rides into Jerusalem, he is humble. He is humble like the donkey that carries him. He gently rises and falls with the movement of this beast of burden. This creature that is remembered for being rented and being beaten and forced to carry heavy loads. Loads that are not her own. The crowds who rejoice at Jesus' triumphal entry don't really see this connection between Jesus and the donkey. And it's understandable. The crowds are excited. They are busy. They're busy cutting branches to spread alongside the road. They're shouting, Hosanna to the king. But suffering women, women like Nanny Crawford, they see it. They see this one who comes humbly riding the creature that he most resembles. The only God that Nanny can receive, truly receive as a Savior, is the one who is humble, the one who is beaten and rented out and burdened with suffering that is not his own. In the church, we mostly find ourselves in those cheering Palm Sunday crowds we sing of glory, laud, and honor to our King. We have only just entered Jerusalem, only just begun the story of Holy Week. But still we are in a hurry. We're in a hurry to crown him. We want to celebrate his victory. Just like the jubilant crowds who shout Hosanna, we want this Jesus to come. And we want him to reassure us, to tell us that we are right and that everything will be okay. We want these things so badly that we forget. We forget what we already know. Jesus' crown 
is a ring of thorns. Jesus' robe is the crimson lashes whipped upon his back. Jesus' scepter is the spike driven through his hand. And Jesus' throne is the cross. Jesus comes to us humbly riding a donkey, rising and falling with this creature who is forced to carry the burdens of the world. There's a Lutheran church in a small Wisconsin village that I once served. And every Palm Sunday, we would reenact this scene of Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. The children and their adult chaperones would gather in front of the great stone steps of the church. With palm branches in hand, they would parade through the streets of that little town. And through it all, they were led by a donkey. There were never any young donkeys available. And no matter whose farm that donkey came from, his name was always Eeyore. Eeyore would be old and broken down. And every year I worry that this used up old creature would drop dead from exhaustion sometime during our 10 block tour. It seemed almost comical back then, but not now. Now I see it from a different place. Now I see that old donkey and remember that Holy Week is the story of the God who loves us by bearing our burdens. Eeyore was gentle and humble, and so too is the God who saves us. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, his coming caused the whole city to be in turmoil. His presence disturbed and disrupted them. This Palm Sunday and this Holy Week are not the ones we wanted. We've been brought down by a virus that has humbled us all. It's hard to wave palm branches. Any victory that we might claim feels hollow. And all of this is just as it should be. For your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey. Listen to Nanny Crawford and all the suffering ones who carry the burdens of others. Open up to the weary and the hurting parts of yourself that cry out for salvation, for liberation from the burdens that you carry. For your king, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey. Amen.
Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. God of mercy, with the saints of every generation, we lift palm branches and cry out to you. From the quiet of our homes, our hearts shout, Hosanna, save us. This holy week, we are physically separated and still we are united in you. Turn our hearts to your mercy and open our lips to sing of your saving love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, quiet the earth where it trembles and shakes. Protect vulnerable ecosystems, threatened habitats, and endangered species. Bless the work of scientists and engineers who work together to sustain and care for your creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, drive away fear and anger that cause us to turn against one another. In this time of vulnerability for our health care, social service, and economic systems, unify our leaders. Move us all to care for our neighbors and to think of the needs of those who are most vulnerable first. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, send your saving help to all who suffer abuse, insult, discrimination, or contempt. Heal the wounded. Comfort the dying. Bring peace to those suffering chronic or terminal illness. Tend to all who cry out for relief. We pause now to offer up the names of those who need your peace and healing, silently or aloud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, we pray for the church community during this time of Holy Week. So much is not the same, and yet you, O oh Lord, are with us. Your story of triumph, vulnerability, crucifixion, and resurrection is a story proclaimed to us as we struggle with isolation and doubt in our own lives. Help us to receive your saving word in new ways this Holy Week. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We now take time to offer up any other prayers, silently or aloud. For what else did the people of God pray? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of mercy, when we breathe our last, you raise us to eternal life. With all your witnesses in heaven and on earth, let us boldly confess the name of Jesus Christ, our resurrection and our hope. Be with the family of Carol Woodmancy and all who grieve the death of someone they love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, Hear these and all our prayers as we commend them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I invite you to receive God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Today and throughout the week ahead, I invite you to go in peace and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.